Hey y'all, so it's the next morning. We're gonna do our green tomato pickles today. I love these, Sweet Hunter loves them. They're great with pinto beans. They're actually good with tacos, they're good with anything. You'll need some kind of uh, hot pepper. Uh, it could be semi-mild. I mean, I'm using chili peppers this morning. You'll need some sugar, some water, and some vinegar. So, let's get to doing these. You need sterilized jars too. They're in the dishwasher finishing up. Let's get to cooking. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to chop these tomatoes up. Now, I chose small tomatoes. You can use big green tomatoes too, if you'd like to. I've done that many, many times. But these are my preference. So, I'm just gonna take the tops off, take the bottoms off, and probably half of them or quarter of them, it's according to what size. You can see these are small. So, but one like this, I'd probably leave whole. So I already have these washed and ready to go. I washed them last night. I'm just gonna take the tops, the bottom off. One like this, I just cut probably in quarter or half. It doesn't matter. Like that. And I'm just gonna continue doing this. If there's any bad spots, cut them off. You don't have to peel it. There's not a core in most of these because they're so small. So we don't have to do that. Now you can use the ones that are blushing like this. It's fine. It is a little more juicy than the others, but it is fine. I've even got one in here, it's turned red and I'm still gonna use it. It'll look pretty in the jar and they taste fine. Now this is the first batch I've done this year, but I like to wait till the tomatoes are just about at the end and that way you get the small tomatoes. It just works better that way. Um, I usually try to do about 50 jars of these because I love to give them away and of course we love them. So I've got my green tomatoes done. I have my chili peppers washed and ready and you just leave them whole unless they have a long stem and it's fine. You're just gonna stick it down there in the jar, each jar for flavor. Uh, you can use any kind of hot pepper that you want if you like, the hotter the better. Or you can use a mild pepper if you don't like heat. So I've got my canner starting to heat up. I'm gonna make my brine now. So my jars are still washing, otherwise I would put my tomatoes and peppers in the jars before I made this, but I'm gonna go ahead and make the brine. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is make one recipe. I'll put this recipe in the description box so you'll have the base recipe. So this recipe calls for half a cup of sugar. So it calls for one cup of water. And it calls for two cups of distilled white vinegar, which is the, uh, can the one you can with. show you the labels just great value it doesn't matter which brand so it calls for one I'm sorry two cups of vinegar so I have put more in I've tripled the recipe because I figured that's what I'll need if I made too much brine I can put it in the refrigerator until I get my other green tomatoes which I'm gonna get them soon I'm gonna get them next week so all we're gonna do is heat this up and we're just gonna stir it until the sugar dissolves. And I have to be careful because it's full. I may have to change pans. Last night we had another blessing. Our neighbor, Justin, came over and uh, she surprised us with a delicious gumbo and cornbread and it was delicious. Thank you, Justin. And I'm going to share with you later, uh, Sweet Hunter got several cards in the mail, and we want to say thank you to all of you um, that sent him cards. That means a lot. He wouldn't let me take videos of him opening because he, you know, just wasn't feeling good. But I'll show him soon. I like to put a towel out. Uh, the girls got me this, these towels. Our Forever Farm, I love them. I think they're so pretty and I use them all the time. But I like to um, 
I like to put a towel out to set my hot jars on. So, I don't know how many jars this is going to fill. I love the wide mouth. If I had a choice of jars, it would be the wide mouth. So, I'm going to get out seven. I don't think we have that, that many to, well... We don't have another wide mouth. I don't think we will have enough to fill even six jars. We'll see, but let's get to filling these. So y'all, this is so easy to do. You've got your hot peppers. Can you see that? Your hot peppers, you've got, I'm just gonna put the hot peppers right in there with the tomatoes. They are, everything's washed, cleaned. The tomatoes are cut up to bite sized pieces and the peppers I'm gonna put in whole. So I'm gonna place one pepper to each jar. If the stem is too long, just cut it off like that and drop one pepper in there. And then we're gonna fill this jar with these pickles, or with these tomatoes. <laughs> Y'all, I'm really tired. I'm telling you, it's the next day, but I'm really, really tired. So. I don't really think you need a funnel because you wanna make sure and get these packed pretty good because you don't want them floating on the top. So you wanna push them down a little bit. Make sure, you wanna leave a, probably a half inch head space. Now I am not a rebel canner, but this is not, this probably wouldn't be considered what they call a safe canning meth method. I go right by the um, ball canning book most of the time, but this is Sweet Hunter's granny's recipe and I've made it with her many times and we love it. We make it every year and it's never uh, bothered us at all. I'm not scared of it at all, but you do you. I mean, I'm, I'm telling you, it is not approved by ball or anything, but it is delicious. We love them. So as you can see, we're putting one hot pepper in each jar and then we're filling the jars with the tomatoes that I've cut in half or quarters, and if they're real small, I just leave them whole. Remember, we're eating these with pintos. I use the brine sometimes to put over a roast. These are delicious, y'all. They're used, I mean, you can use them for anything. If you don't like anything hot, don't put the hot peppers, just put a mild pepper in it. Hey, you probably don't have to put anything at all, but that is what makes it like, you know, pickle, like pickles. I have put jalapenos in here before. Now it gets a little hot there. I wanna really mash these down because I don't want them floating on the top. Oh yeah, we're gonna get, we're gonna get more than the six. Yay, I'd like to make several canners of this. That's how much we love them. And, I, and my family loves them. I always give them, what, I give them away to them. So let's get another hot jar or two out. These are not the wide mouth, but they'll be, do just fine. Now, sometimes if I have a lot of hot pepper left over, I'll make just a jar of hot pepper sauce and I just uh, process them just like I do these. We're gonna water bath these, remember? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna water bath pints for, our rule of thumb is pints for 10 minutes and quarts for 15. And I would need to get the rest of these in. So this made just about a whole canner full. So if I can get the rest of these in, there's just a few and I'm just gonna push them down because there's space in there. Don't wanna, you do want to have some kind of head, head space, but I'm telling you, you don't want to waste these because they are so good. Our favorite is, is a, did I put a pepper in there? Yeah, I did. It's boiling, so I'm going to get it. I'm going to pour it in the jars over the tomatoes. Now you do need a funnel for this, and you need to be very careful pouring these. See, I got too much in there, but that's an easy fix. Pour them in there and leave about a half an inch of head space. Now I did 
mash my tomatoes down again. And once you put the liquid in, whoo, that vinegar is strong. Then you can uh, get the air out and you'll see if you need any more brine. So that filled all those up. Of course, as always, we want to get all the air bubbles out. So you just want to put a utensil of some kind down in here and let the air bubbles come out. Now, as you can see, some of those tomatoes are popping up. So I may have a little too many tomatoes. I might have pushed it a little bit, but that's okay. I'm going to get another jar and I'm going to fill them up. So right now we're just getting the air bubbles out. And then we'll have to add more liquid, I'm sure, when I take these out. Yep, I'm gonna have to take some out. And that's okay. So all I did here is got another fresh, clean, sterilized jar and just took some of the tomatoes out. Cause I did push it. I was trying to get them all in these seven jars, I believe. And uh, it just was too many. Uh, when you took the air bubbles out, as you could see, the tomatoes were overflowing and you wouldn't have had a head space. So this was an easy fix and hey, it just gives us another jar to work with. Now see, that was an easy fix, but now we've got to add more brine to each jar and make sure it has a half an inch head space. Hey, back in the day, I would have stressed over something like that and thought I just didn't do it good enough. But it's okay to make mistakes in the kitchen. That's how we learn. And we just, you know, ad lib, we just fix them. We just fix the problem. It's no big deal. So if you're somebody that's just learning to can or just learning to cook, just go with it. Just learn from so it. This one we're setting aside. I've got to warm up more brine for this. These, I'm going to make sure that air is out good because you don't want anything to cause this not to seal. And if you see any tomatoes, see that needs a little more brine in it. Once you take the air out, it always requires a little more. I'm gonna take some of these out. We're gonna have a whole nother full jar. Super. Let me get this brine. I want that brine to cover these green tomatoes. For some reason, when you take the air out, it shrinks that, um, it makes the makes you need more brine. So that new jar that we just put tomatoes in, it doesn't have any brine in it. So we're gonna set it aside until I get, I get my brine warmed, but we're gonna go ahead with the rest of the tomatoes. Now we've removed the air from the jars. Now it's time to clean the, the rim of the jar, the top where the lid will be sitting on it. That's what makes it seal. If you have something sticky or a little crumb or something on it, it will not seal. And I'm just using a wet paper towel. Now used to, you had to take these lids and boil them. Now you just put them right on the jars and then you put the rings on. Now, I do the rings finger tight. I don't tighten them a lot. You just do them finger tight. And now these are ready for the canner. Now I'm just placing my jars in the hot canner that's been heating up. You want the water to cover the top of the jars. Now remember this sitting there fine. I couldn't remember how many fit in this canner. So this water is barely over the top. I need it just a little bit more. So I've got I have an electric little kettle that takes 90 seconds to heat up the water. So I'm gonna add that water. So while this water is heating up to cover it, I'm gonna let the lid sit on that. If 
you don't have one of those little electric canners, they are wonderful. They're great to make tea. They're great for, canning is my go-to thing. So we're gonna wait on that to heat up. I'm gonna add a little more water. And then we're gonna bring this to a boil. I think a bird just hit the window. We're gonna bring this to a boil, which it is almost to a boil now. And we're gonna process this 10 minutes for pints and 15 for quarts. So while I'm waiting on that water to heat up, I quickly clean my counters and get everything cleaned. I wanna clean as I go because it's awful to get through and you're tired and you've gotta still clean the kitchen. So every chance you get, clean up. That mess cleaned up, but I'm really, really tempted to go ahead and make pepper. Whoops, I'm telling y'all, I'm a mess. Um, I'm really, really tempted to make some, a jar of pepper sauce. It's really good. And when you run out of it, you just add more vinegar. That's all you do. So one jar is all you need. Usually it's all we need for the winter. And we love the juice of these green tomatoes too. So it's really good. So I'm just gonna fill this up with what I have left over here. And I'm gonna just use the same brine that I have because I have a little bit left over and just pour over these and stick it right in that canner. I think I'll have room with those tomatoes. If not, you can just put it in the refrigerator just like this and and uh, you won't use the peppers unless you want to, but you'll just use the, uh, the liquid. And like I say, when this runs out, all you have to do is add vinegar to it. Let's see, where's my funnel? I better use that funnel. I've made a big mess here. Better hold it over the sink. So this is gonna be so good. I I didn't want to let these peppers sit until uh, next week when I got the tomatoes. So this will be good. This will be really good. And I'm gonna cut that stem off right there and push those down as far as I can get them. So see y'all, it's easy to do stuff in the kitchen. You can you can actually teach yourself. Look, I found another pepper. That must be the one I dropped. Let's see if we can get it in here. We'll push it way down in here. So I'm gonna put a lid on this. That pepper, that, that little thing is trying to peep out. I don't want that. And it won't matter if you want to cut these peppers up. So it doesn't matter, because you're just, or we're just gonna use the juice of this. And like I say, runs out of brine, just fill it up with white vinegar. I'm gonna wipe the lid off like with that. I'm gonna try to get this in here. That's gonna push that water up a little bit more. We're not gonna need a whole lot of water. There we go. Let me get those little electric. little electric heater ever. So here it is, it's boiled the water in 90 seconds. There's several different brands out there. This is nothing special, B-A-Y-K-A, -A, nothing special. I have two, I have one downstairs, one upstairs. All I'm doing is gonna add water until this is about an inch. Well, it's got a max line. I'm gonna add it to that max line. This is wonderful, y'all. If you can, you need one of these. If you don't can, you need one of these. All right, we're gonna bring that back up to a boil and we're gonna time it for 10 minutes. It won't matter if you go 15. Like I say, this is a rebel cannon method anyway. I'm sure Ball wouldn't approve this. And like I say, I don't do that very often. I do it with this. I do it with an apple pie uh, filling that I'll make probably when, well, when the apples come in in the fall. Pecan caramel pie filling. A friend gave me this recipe, it's delicious. And I love to have it, I love to have it for Thanksgiving. So, I got Thanksgiving on the mind. Hey Google, set timer for 10 minutes. So this is to a rolling boil. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm doubling my towels because when I get these out, they'll be hot and I'll just have them ready. I have this set to canning. Uh, again, this is a water bath, electric water bath. It's called Fresh Tech. Uh, I actually bought this before I bought my um, 
electric pressure canner. But when you're just water bathing, it's nice to have this because of this spout. And I'll try to remember to show you how I just let the water out in the sink and I don't have to lift this big canner. It's great. So we're going to process that for 10 minutes. We'll bring them out to cool. I'm going to wash up these dishes and get this sticky mess cleaned up. And then I've got to go spend some time with Sweet Hunter. I went down there a while ago, passed through to get something, and he said, it's good to see you. It's been so long. I, have a, I don't remember what you look like. It's probably about true, but it's time for us to watch a program or something together. I've got to do, get some rest, so waiting on this canner. This is going to be good. We treasure this recipe. This was Sweet Hunter's Granny's recipe, and it just means a lot to us, and we love it. We, we loved it when she made it, and we love it when we make it. We've been married about 45 years, and we've made it almost every year. Now, a quick update on Sweet Hunter. He has his good days and his bad days. It's been almost a month since he had his surgery. Uh, it's going to take him a couple of more months to get back on his feet, but he's doing good all in all. Hey, and we appreciate all your prayers and messages. It means more to us than you know. Here's my timer. I'm going to finish putting up these dishes real quick. And then I'm going to turn this canner off. Then I like to take the lid off and let it just sit here probably about five minutes just to, it don't really cool down because it's in that boiling hot water, but it, it's not such a shock to it when you bring the jars out. So I'm gonna let them sit here for about five minutes and just acclimate to the room as much as it can. But I have the canner off and unplugged. So I've took the scraps out to the garden, dumped them in the garden, and um, I had forgot that uh, something got into my bird feeders last night. I don't know if it was a raccoon, a deer, I don't know what it was. I have saw a deer in the woods. I haven't saw a raccoon here, but Sweet Hunter says that raccoons are known to do that. I've got to go clean that up, so hey, come along with me. Look, I, I cooked hamburgers on the Blackstone and I haven't even hardly cleaned that up and put it up yet. I've got to do that too. There's always so much to do. So, you can see my bird feeders right there on the ground. Now this bird feeder sitting here, I'm gonna to have to throw away. So I've got that, it, the, the screw stripped on it. But look at this. Now it didn't get those two, but it got, all these made a mess in Sweet Hunter's yard. He's not very happy about that. So, this stand, I'm about, I'm about fed up with this bird feeder too. This one is great right here. I gotta get it up, try to save some of that bird seed. Bird seed is everywhere. Sweet Hunter hates that in his grass. That's all things that happen, but hopefully he won't be out here much.
I love this little stand, but it's broke and I don't want to give it up yet. So I just changed it. Instead of bird feed, I put my hummingbird feeders on it. And I think that'll be more lightweight and not let it break all the time like it's been doing. We'll see. I think that little red bird feeder was defective because it's never worked. The squirrels can open it so easy. The other one, the screw strips, so I'm throwing both of these away. So that looks a whole lot better. And I've got my hummingbirds on this little stand that will not hold them. I had to put my chairs down on my fire pit because the birds were sitting on the chairs and that's something else I'll have to wash. So here's the tomatoes I got today from the garden. It's dwindling down, it's dwindling down. Okay, let's go back in and let's see if the Jars are ready to come out of the canner, which I'm sure they are. Y'all don't look at all my cobwebs. So the canner's not available right now to work. And so it's all on me and I'm not getting it all. It's hard to do both. Oh yeah. Wash my hands because I'm there. I'm sweating off everything. Thank you for going and helping me. <laughs> it seemed like I had helpers anyway. So let's get these out. Okay, where's our little thing with you? There it is. Our pepper sauce. Let's see. See it or not. Pepper sauce. And the rest is our green tomato pickles. They look great. I don't normally like tilt my lids when they come out of the canner. I just leave that, they're already pinging, y'all hear them? And I just leave that water on top of it. And I let these sit here for at least 24 hours. And then I take the rings off. Now many people ask why we take the rings off. The reason we take the rings off is because you would not be able to tell if a seal has sealed. If the seal has come undone and you have a ring holding it down, you won't be able to see that. But if you have the rings off, after 24 hours, you take the rings off and it just has the lid on it. Hear them pinging? Uh, then if it pops up and doesn't seal, you'll know it. Aren't these beautiful? So that's just a little while in the kitchen with some green tomatoes, green tomato pickles, and we love them. Ping, ping, hear it? I, lo I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Well, I've got this done in the kitchen. Oh, I'm gonna show y'all how to do that canner. Hold so on. this is the neatest thing. Let me put that lid over here. So, ping. So my age, I don't need to be lifting canners. So I've got this right at the sink and that faucet will just drain the hot water right down your too. It'll drain it down to about that much and then you have to pour it out, but it's not heavy at all. So I'm letting that drain out. I'll clean that canner up. We'll let these sit here 24 hours, take the rings off, put them downstairs in the room where I'm keeping all the canned goods and I'm gonna clean up the rest of the kitchen. I've got the bird feeders picked up. Thank goodness, I was gonna wait till later. I'm sweating like everything. I got a few things to do that Sweet Hunter does before he goes to bed. And we're gonna go down there and relax. Hey, thank y'all for joining me. I'm so excited we got this done. We'll do some more next week. Thank y'all for watching. It means a lot to me. Thank you for your prayers for Sweet Hunter. He's gonna get better. So, y'all like, subscribe, share. 
and join us on the next one. Make sure and ring that notification bell too. It, it'll alert you when I have another video. So I'm gonna let this drain out and we're gonna go. I gotta close the garage doors up and probably take a shower and put my gown on and I'm gonna relax. Thank y'all for watching. Y'all go cook something. <laughs>